Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today, tonight even, well it's tonight in the UK, um, we're going to be going over a sample library I picked up the other week um, called Frozen Percussion. It is a library by Fracture Sounds and I'm really enjoying it at the moment. I'm really enjoying, enjoying using it as a, a layering tool. So I've been putting it with other instruments just to pad out some of that sonic space. Um, it's really, really good um, in drama settings because maybe a melody isn't actually quite what the scene needs or isn't quite what the director wants or whoever you're working for really, or maybe it's just the way the piece is going. Um, you can imply quite a lot just with tones and just general atmospheres and instruments like this are perfect for that. Um, so yeah, so we'll get straight to it. A little bit of history. Fracture Sounds, I'll bring this onto the screen anyway. Fracture Sounds is a small company based in the UK who sample instruments. And the one thing I'd like to promote about them is all their instruments are affordable. I mean, this sample library is £29.99. I don't know what that is in dollars, but it's next to nothing. Anyway, getting a library of this quality for 30 quid is a bargain by in any means. Um, I'll leave a link to this website and this page in the description of the video because you can have a nice read. Um, there's, a, there's a nice bit of um, a bit of a blurb. Um, there's also a bit about the frost layer. Um, it's it's a fracture sounds thing. It's a, it's a, it's one of their signature sounds. You'll hear similar things on quite a lot of the um, instruments where they use this frost layer, and it, it seems like it's just like a texture, an additional texture. You can turn it on and off. Um, but I just think it sounds awesome leaving it on. Or leaving it on just subtle. It's just a nice, nice little addition to the, to the VST anyway. Um, there's also a nice video um, to show you basically how they've done it. It's basically with a bow. And this is a vibraphone, which is, I've never actually seen one in real life, but I'm assuming it's just like a big ass glockenspiel. And there's also a patch walkthrough where um, somebody, Maybe he works for... Well, let me know, because I'm sure, sure you'll watch this. Um, who's in your team? Is it just you, and you've just got this this guy to help you? Or, By the way, I'm not doing this as a sponsored video. I've physically gone out and bought this. Um, Will's just someone I've been to the pub with a few times, and I just love to support my fellow musicians. So, And plus, what's 30 quid? What's 30 quid? And you get a new toy. Um, you can see related products. They've also got crow tiles. I think that's how you say it, crow tiles. Um, which is a similar thing, but it's under the frozen percussion. And like I said, 30 quid again. It's, I really suggest you check him out anyway. Um, so we'll get straight into it. So we'll get rid of that. So you'll load it up and this is what you'll get. You'll get the instrument in contact. It uses contact. I'm not, I think it works in the free one. It might not. What does it say? Does it on the website? Do it work in the free one? Oh, you need a full version of Contact 5 for this. Don't be cheap anyway. If you're going to be a composer, you're going to have to spend lots of money and see no return for years to come. <laughs> so you'll get this nice, beautiful interface. And just out of the box, I'll just play a chord. This is what it sounds like. See, it just sounds pretty. It just sounds pretty. So what I'm going to briefly go over, I do recommend watching the actual walkthrough video um, because I'm literally just going to show you a brief overview and then I'm going to show you what I use it for so far. What I've found is a really effective way to create drama from an instrument you may already have. So, as you notice, when I play the key down, just watch over this dynamics knob here. And apart from the fact that my keyboard's pushing out some weird CC information, so it's kind of cluttering around a bit, um, you'll notice that little line. Now that little line is how seems to be an emulation, or it might even be like a crossfade of sorts of how hard they bowed the individual notes. So if I do turn, that, so if you listen to it again.
And they've even added in their own pre-programmed automation as well, just for a bit of movement. Because a lot of instruments, without the movement, they just sound cheap and tacky. So if I turn out full, does it let me? You'll, you'll hear the, it's almost if they're really pressing on the bow. I don't know if they were going to string players, but when you get to like the edge of your, of your bow, you get that nice scratchy sound and you seem to get that with this anyway. So I'll play this cut, same chord again. Might be better if I play it high up actually. And you see, you get that kind of like, it just seems a bit louder. It seems a bit louder, but it seems, you know, like they're really pushing it in. It might, it might be something to do with the frost layer as well. I mean, you can solo the frost layer as well. I mean, I mean, shit, that on its own sounds fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, let's play that chord again. I mean, Christ, if you just had it this on solo, you basically get two instruments for the price of one. Will you clever little fucker you. So, yeah, it's definitely to do with the dynamics. Dynamics, it seems to give it that, re that piercing. Sound. Yeah, so. We move on to your speed. Your speed is how fast that little line gets to the highest point, so. That went up really quick. Now if you move it, if you move all the way down to like there. That was almost in, in picture with my arm roaring PC fan. And the drift, I can't remember what this did. I should really read the manual on these things. Let's see if I can work it out. Ah! That seems to affect the behaviour of how it goes to the end. It seems to, seems to then, when I had it on full, it seemed to have like delayed it, go back a bit, go a bit further, go a bit further. So you can just play around. And the good thing is, is you've kind of got this as a s starting block, you know. You mess around with these settings and you make them your own, you know, once you start playing with different tempo speeds and stuff. Obviously, you can't probably use any plugin like this from stock. You'll have to fine-tune it in, but that's what you pretty much need. Um, you can ride it on a mod wheel. Um, I'm absolutely terrible at multitasking with my left hand, so it's a joke in there. Um, so I just tend to draw it in. So I'm not too, too sure where, I'm assuming it's just a CC1. Yeah, CC1. And we've got a visitor. I've got, I've got my cat who's now currently jumping in on my video. Come on, mate. Come on. Your dad's got to work. So yeah, so that's the plugin in a nutshell. So what I want to look at now is what you can do with it to add it as a layer and a layer to support another instrument. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this because what I found is when I use, you'll get two, you'll get two versions of this, this instrument. You'll get the normal Frozen Vibes and you'll get this Frozen Vibes Waves version. And this is basically, it's like a, it's almost like a one shot. It, it, you, you can control the length of the wave with the mob wheel, but once it plays once, that's it. So it's really good if you, if you're using a piano patch and you want that sustain with your, with your pedal. Um, if your CC isn't all the way to the top, the the wave will stop. 
but the piano can carry on and I think that's really good because if you're going to go into the realms of like doing quite quick chords and stuff like that um, you can kind of use the delay of the wave to your advantage to fill out some of that space and make it less attacky, less, less prominent and you can create quite an ominous sound and keep it all nice. So it's all about finding that balance though. So I've got this set up. Let's change that to Omni for now. So if I play, I'm going to do it is I'll play, I'll just play the part on the piano on its own. I'd best turn this up actually. Let's keep on going. So if we just do... So let's take that. Been noodling around with, with those two chords. So what you can do is I've got them both playing now. So if I play them both at once, and as you can see, that carried on. That that wave carried on. So if I no move this down a bit. And I'm going to turn this down in volume, not move it underneath it. I'm going to turn this down a bit. You just got to find that right amount. I mean, let's wax a lot of reverb on this. Let's turn the width up. There we go. So, the it, 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 you can obviously because you've heard it first, you're going to hear it a bit more. But so it's going to do that. So if I'm just going to move that down and down a couple of dB again, and it's just going to act as a supporting layer. So as the piano starts to decay away, this wave is still going to be playing, but because it's only at a certain volume, you'll end up with this like almost wall of sound, but because it's coming from such a delicate instrument and it's not coming from like a synthesizer and it's not running through any really posh reverbs, you'll end up with this. It just sounds pretty. It just sounds pretty and it's sounds subtle and I think it's really, it's just really good for drama. So if I'll, I'll play that same chord sequence again and just see what difference it makes. So yeah, there you go. So go out, buy this library, 30 quid, stick it under a piano. I mean, I got this, this isn't even a nice posh piano. This is literally just something you get with contacts complete. I think I've had this, this piano patch for maybe around like, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Um, and it just adds something new, it adds a bit of atmosphere to your already existing sample library collections. So yeah, check this out. Check any of this stuff out. If you enjoyed this, give it a like. Um, subscribe if, you, if you'd like to see me do more of this stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm hopefully going to try and get my room noise sorted out so that I don't have to use this lav mic. Um, but I've got a really, really noisy PC at the moment because it's getting old. So once I get a new PC, hopefully I'll get it water cooled or something like that. And then I can start using my actual expensive microphone. Um, and then yeah, and then we can get some better quality quality videos. So yeah, if you like this, yeah. So thanks again, Will, for making a wonderful library and making it affordable for people like me who don't like spending money. And yeah, peace. <laughs>